So my slides are visible. Yeah. Thank you. So I will be talking about the importance of triglycerides and uh, their importance is continuing to emerge. So we know that dyslipidemia and the current recommendations we also know. But the one thing which we always forget that most of the recommendations are based on the Western data and the guidelines are also based on that. And the, probably we are responsible for that. We do not have our Indian data. And according to these guidelines, LDL is the primary target and statins are the first line therapy. No doubt about it and nobody is going to condemn that. Still, LDL is the primary target and statins are the first line therapy. And uh, talking about Ejitribib and PCSK9 in very rare conditions, in, especially in my country, because here the LDL is not the main culprit. I will say not only the main culprit, because very high LDLs are rarely seen in Indian setup. Uh, in spite of intensive statin therapy, the problem is present, is still present, especially in our country. And they are about developing CV events and people are still dying. Statins are there for almost so many years, but it's still a large change in our, cardi our cardiovascular risk reduction has not been achieved. The regions may be whatsoever. So if we say that still the intensive high dose statin therapy and moderate statin therapy, a lot of statins are available, and most of the trials have also shown the statically significant reduction is there, but significant residue remains there. So residual risk still remains there. And this becomes very important in our Indian perspective because our dyslipidemia is thought to be different. And I am seeing a lot of literature, a lot of uh, uh, persons talking about that Indian dyslipidemia is different. And they say that it's more heterogenic. And they also say that here the LDL is not very high, the HDL is uh, low, and the basically the triglycerides are very high. So it's be taken in account. But when they talk about treatment, they say that it remains safe. So if our dyslipidemia is different, then why not the treatment is different? Now question. In diabetic individuals, Insulin resistance and high TG lead to increased STLDL and low HDLC. So basically, the dense LDL, small dense LDL particles and low HDLC particles, they are very important and they are linked to the pathophysiology of diabetes and linked to high TG levels. Then why high TG levels are not being addressed? And most of the persons say that high TG levels are not important because reducing the TG level, uh, the optimum uh, reducing the TG level do not have the outcome. Basically, if you go by pathophysiology, you will see IR increases more and LDL particles and these LDL particles they are more small dense LDL particles. They are more heterogenic. And here, the basic role of hepatic lipid enzyme occurs because we are having high triglyceride levels, and that is why we have different dyslipidemia as well. In Indian, diabetic dyslipidemia is different, which is taught so many times. Yes, it is different. That is improved beyond doubt that Asian Indian. Uh, migrants and Asian Indian urbans, you see the difference lies here. And you see that Indian dyslipidemia has high density lipoprotein cholesterols and average level of high density lipoprotein cholesterol of Asian Indian compared to Caucasians have been shown here. And average level of serum triglyceride of Asian Indians compared to Caucasians have been shown here. So average Indians in relation to Caucasians have different level of triglycerides and HDL and also LDL. So serum TG levels are higher in urban Asian Indians residing in India and also migrants Asian Indians is low among all Asian Indians. So this is in comparison to Caucasian population. Thus, this does high TG contribute to severe risk. Whether this particular increase in TG is also increasing the severe risk 
this is shown here. If you talk about phenotype A and phenotype B, the high TG level increases the small dense LDL fraction, which are more heterogenic than uh, the large LDL one. So because of that, the Indian dyslipidemia becomes more heterogenic. Effects of blood TG on cardiovascular all-cause mortality have also been shown here. Elevated blood TG levels are those dependently associated with the higher risk of cardiovascular all-cause mortality as compared to the reference TG levels. So they have more uh, atherogenicity. Fasting TG levels predict recurrent ischemic events in patients with acute coronary syndrome treated with statins. This is the published in General American Co uh, College of Cardiology in 2015. Here, I would like to emphasize again that most of the time, the fasting triglyceride levels are fasting and fasting lipid profile is not possible. Then we have to think over and if we are doing the, uh, this lipid in non-fasting condition, then we can consider another factor that is the uh, non-HDL part. The non-HDL levels then becomes very important because most of the times the fasting one is not possible. So various studies, the dial outcome study, the miracle study, they have they have shown that the uh, fasting TG and CV risk is independent uh, of the LDLC. So they show that the fasting TG level and CV risk are very well related, and this is different from the relationship which we have with LDL. So 50% higher residual CV risk after intensive statin therapy, after achieving LDL less than 73. So even if we achieve LDL less than 73, is still the high residual CV risk is still there. So short-term risk hazard ratio of CV event in miracle study was also said, and this is well also related to TG dials. And that was shown that when TG is less in the relationship, and it is uh, adjusted relationship. If it is less than 135, you see here that the risk and primary endpoint event goes down below one. So that is the case here. Again, becomes the importance of TG. Elevated TG level is independently associated with increased alcohol mortality in patients with established coronary heart disease. So this original article published on 8th, March 2016 in, again shows that elevated TG levels are important and this was 22 year follow up and this shows that definitely the TG levels are important. We cannot ignore TG level that there is no outcome trial so we have to uh, ignore that. Hazard ratio of mortality, you see again, it is related with TG level and if increasing TG level the hazard ratio is again rising. So mortality is related to TG level. You cannot say that TG levels are not important. Only LDLC is important and that we will take in account. So this 22 year mortality risk for patient with TG 200 to 499 was increased by 29% when compared with patients with low normal triglyceride. This is very, very important. Again, increased residual cardiovascular risk in patients with diabetes and high versus normal triglyceride despite statin control LDL cholesterol. A very good trial, very good article published by Nicholas and in diabetes of obese metabolism in 2019. Again, emphasizing the same fact. Here again, the adjusted incidence rates per 1,000 person years were shown. And here again, the TG levels less than 150 were found to be very, very good. Then came the PDM study. This, this particular study here, the remnant cholesterol, not LDL cholesterol, is associated with incident cardiovascular disease. So remnant cholesterol, not only LDL cholesterol, this study evaluated the association of TG and remnant cholesterol with a major cardiovascular event in cohort of older individuals at high cardiovascular risk, again published in 2020, very recent trial. And that again shows that the importance of TG is emerging again not going down and we cannot say that TG is not important and see here that uh, the triglyceride levels are again becoming gaining the importance because you have seen the source of cholesterol remnants is basically because of that they have a role in the synthesis that is why the emerging is again and again we are talking about triglyceride levels and we cannot say only on outcome we have to see from where these all LDL particles are coming here, the association of baseline lipid values with cardiovascular outcome were studied. And again, here, not only HDL, LDL, the triglycerides were also 
having the importance and you see the p value 0.001 so early every 10 mg per deciliter increment in ldl level is associated with 1% increase in the relative risk of cbd that is very well shown everywhere but nobody is talking about the triglyceride levels if they are low then definitely they are significant so every 10 mg per deciliter increment in tg level is associated with 4% increase in the relative risk of cbd that has not been shown see 1% reduction is talked about but 4% increase in the risk by rising tg is not talked about so we have to think over that not only that combination of high tg and low hdl is associated with 44% increase in the risk of cbd so that is why we have to think over it that the tg levels are very very important again it shows that 85% increase risk of mes with upper quartile of tg so you have high tg you have lot lot of problems here again you see 85% increase risk of mes is there 83% increase risk of mes with upper quartile of remnant cholesterol that is again very very important here again lies the fact that tg are important again it shows that ldl less than 100 and you see highest relative risk of mes is there is still present if you reduce ldl is still you have this does reduction in tg reduce the risk that is the million dollar question because the relative relative uh, this uh, we do have that uh, the tg is associated with a lot lot of risk but whether if we reduce tg the risk also goes down that is in published here in the cardiovascular risk reduction with the icosapent ethyl for hypertriglyceridemia it reduced it trial that was the best trial in relation to t triglycerides and here again it was emphasized and the very good number of patients that included 8179 patients and baseline median tg was 216 mg per deciliter and primary endpoints were also selected very cleverly i reduce it very well shows that uh, here the men and women more than 45 years and n number 8000 persons and here epa 4 g per day was given and compared with placebo study design was 4 to 6 years and primary and points of prevention of first major cbd so that serves our purpose and this is very good trial i will say and here the mean baseline tg values were not very high they were around 216 and here you say that and you see that the primary endpoints in relation to placebo by ecosapent style you can see here that the clear cut difference you can make it out primary endpoint of 25% rrr in cv death non fatal mi non fatal stroke coronary revascularization unstable angina secondary endpoint of 26% in cv death non fatal mi and non fatal stroke so significant reduction of the cross secondary endpoint this is the major evidence i will say regarding cv death mi and stroke cv death was reduced 20% fatal or non fatal mi was reduced 31% stroke was reduced 28% and what more you want so reduction in tg definitely helps that is proved beyond doubt by this meta analysis of five landmark studies they included and that meta analysis shows that the accord field other trials you see here and they all have shown that r ratio in relation to triglycerides and this was published in way back 2010 that has shown that the triglycerides are important 35% relative risk reduction with tg lowering therapy in patient with baseline tg was shown. not only that in 2019 esc es guidelines also included for the management of dyslipidemia lipid modification to reduce cardiovascular risk again here it was emphasized that only ldl c goal may not be enough tg levels were also included in that in particular these guidelines they have addressed this es 2020 guidelines they again have emphasized that triglycerides cannot be undermined they had to be there and according to them the triglyceride levels are very very high then we have to reduce it and they even they have emphasized the uh, importance of triglycerides lie uh, the india lie from india lipid association of india expert consensus statement the management of dyslipidemia again has mentioned 
that the triglyceride levels, if they are more than 200, to uh, 200, then they have to be addressed. And if they're more than 500, definitely they have to be addressed first because they will have the, the impact on the all parameters. And they have also recommended the fibrates and omega-3 fatty acids. We can, we, this particular topic do not uh, allow us to talk more about the, uh, the treatments which are given. We have better treatments now available in form of saragitazor, which can help us to reduce TG levels effectively and also having the effect on the, uh, the uh, blood sugar levels. So the saragitazor drug has already shown that effect of a dual PPR, gamma and alpha activity agonist on insulin sensitivity in patient of type 2 diabetes. This is established fact and we have a lot of our own data that this helps in reducing not only TG, it also helps in reducing various other parameters like also helping in fatty liver, also helping reducing in blood sugar levels and apart from that also reducing the cardiac risk as well. So the, is, this particular study has also shown, and if you go quickly to the results, that shows that uh, the, uh, the results are very much in favor of uh, saraglitazor, reduction in the A1C and also insulin sensitivity. So in the Journal of Diabetes and Metabolism has published this particular article, uh, 24 weeks prospective multicenter single arm study conducted in 104 patient with a diabetes TG level more than 200. And this was the first study to evaluate non-HDL as a primary endpoint, not only LDL. Yes. And here again, the glider result shows us that the non-HDL is a significant and if we reduce non-HDL, definitely it is the statically significant results are seen. Similarly, real world experience of saraglitazor, which I was talking about, has also been published and new dual, this paroxysm proliferator activated receptor agonist saraglitazor has shown us that the effect were also in favorable in diabetic dyslipidemia and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So not only addressing the particularly only TG levels, addressing at the, uh, the whole metabolic uh, paranoma, or you can say where the R synthesis is going on inside liver. So that is the basic point. So if we go by these studies and see here, a lot, lot of studies are there and various parameters if we study, then we can see that triglycerides are definitely important and we cannot just ignore them. And the high triglyceride levels have to be addressed and the best treatment available at present is saragitazor. If we talk about other options, then definitely other options have a lot, lot of side effects, while saragitazor is devoid of all these side effects, which usually seen with uh, phenofibrates, which we'll talk more about. So at the end, I would like to say that uh, triglycerides, especially in the Indian population, had to be addressed. And we have enough evidences. Uh, we should not wait for the outcome trials like a statin therapy, because statin therapy is altogether different therapy. We may not compare the data of saragitazor or any other compound with the statin therapy, but we must say that the residual risk, which was, which was there even after the maximum statin therapy can be addressed uh, by using the therapies for reduction of the triglyceride levels. So take home message is that even after intensive statin therapy, residual CV risk is a major concern a recent large studies have shown that high TG also significantly contribute to residual CV risk. And so the TG had to be targeted. And especially if it's more than 200, then definitely we have to target that. And we have to search for the particular drug, effective drug, which not only reduces TG, also has the better impact on the blood sugar levels and also has the impact on the liver as well. Because the liver, the factory where all these synthesis are going on. Uh, in India, low HDL and high TG is the most prevalent form of dyslipidemia. So we have to be cautious about that. And the high TG is heterogenic as it is strongly associated with the high proportion of SDLDL, that is the small dense LDL particles, which has the highest heterogeneity. Saragitazor is a good option for these conditions where TG is more than 200, especially in diabetic population. But especially, I have seen that it also works where the non-diabetic population, the TG is very, very high and also helpful in managing the liver as well. 
So I will end here that LDL is the primary target and statins should be the first line therapy for dyslipidemia management. But we have to think about TGI as well and we have to sustenate our therapy. We have to give another therapy as well along with the statin to take uh, uh, the care of the DG levels as well. You just cannot ignore it. And uh, the chairperson asked me to say one word, a few words about the the fasting versus non-fasting. If we are doing non-fasting lipid profile, even then the non-HDL uh, calculation will help us. So this is not an issue at present. Thank you. Thank you very much.